Hello, hello, my name is Monica and welcome to Guru Grit, a place that is for learning and cultivating knowledge. So every time you learn, I learn something, we learn together. That's the whole point. So let's get into it. Today, a quick astrology video, a question asked by my beautiful visionary patron, Jenna. Jenna asks, will I be successful? Can you see success in astrology? Yes, of course you can. So today I just wanted to do a simple thing that you can look for. It'll take you one second to notice it in your chart or the chart of another. So let's get into it. Houses of importance are going to be one, ten. I put four and six because the fourth house aspects the tenth. And the sixth house is the house of work and service. But it's also a house of semi-wealth, okay? If the other ones are trashed, but this one is doing all right, you can still manage to make a living. Now, seventh is also really important, and I'll explain as we go on. Planets to look for are Sun, the North, and North Node. Saturn. Saturn causes really big things to happen in one's life that can last a really long time. Really impactful. You'll see a solid Saturn in the charts of politicians and many celebrities, so nothing to fear there. And the natural ruler of the indicating houses that we've just gone over, if that ruler is strong, if that ruler is supported, well aspected, all those things will be very favorable. Now Sun, because Sun is the career indicating planet, like Mercury is a career indicating planet, he has a lot to do with commerce and finance, but Sun is predominant. So first example, as I'm going through the creativity series, I've had the pleasure of casting so many cool charts, discovering new people. And I learned about Theo Vaughn through TikTok, my For You page. He seemed to have exploded on the internet. I didn't know who he was prior, but I, everybody will know him very soon because his time is nigh. Now, this is an amazing chart. So the first thing I want everybody to look for, and I've written here, First Lord in the 10th, I really want you to pay attention to, does your chart ruler sit in the 10th house. So Theo Vaughn is a Scorpio rising and Mars rules Scorpio. Whoop! And Mars sits in the 10th house. Absolutely brilliant. So this is an excellent indicator of success because the first house is your self image and the 10th house is status. So if you took the energy of you and posited it in the 10th, you would get somebody who's like a brand. Another uh, variation of this is the seventh ruler in the first. I've recently spoken about Sarah Silverman in the in the in one of the marriage presentations, and she has seventh ruler in the first. She's a Sagittarius rising, so seventh is occupied by Gemini and Mercury in Sagittarius. Therefore, it is debilitated, but Mercury is very strong in the first house. So this is really, really helping her. So you become like, you become your own work in effect because the seventh house is the house of you can't trade with yourself the seventh house is the house of you know uh, negotiation contracts with other people so if you take the energy of that and put it in the first house hey people want a piece of you very good to look for and uh, the other reason i mentioned the seventh is because it's the tenth from the tenth house we count inclusively in astrology it's called bavat bavam from house to house or house of the house and you get the seventh house is the tenth of the tenth. So if you've gotten a reading from me, I, I do give credence to the tenth house. It is important. But I, I pay attention more to the seventh. I've seen much more successful people come from the seventh. In any case here, just look at the first ruler, the chart ruler. Okay, if you're a Cancer rising, does your moon sit in the tenth house? That's what we're looking for. Mars isn't a friendly sign. Check. He's also in the best possible house. Mars excels in the tenth house. So this is a very fortunate person. Now, what took so long? This is a really interesting little bonus tip. Uh, if you're a Scorpio ascendant, there's a few ascendants like this, but especially Scorpio, it's very keenly felt. Mars rules the first of self and Mars rules the sixth of competition, litigation, you know, responsibilities, obligations. Not much fun happens in the sixth house. I suppose the best thing about the sixth house is it gives us, uh, it gives us pets, uh, little animals and things like that, nature loving house. So here, the first house is ruled by Mars. And one of the things about the first house, I'm coming out with a course in houses. Okay, it's overloaded with meaning. One of the meanings of the first house is it is the person's capacity to overcome obstacles in life. And clearly Theo Vaughn's Mars is quite strong. He is a bit 
you know, agitated, let's say exacerbated its qualities, the warlike qualities, the fighter qualities here with the North Node can give the person an amplified sense of needing to defend oneself or fight, fight for what they want. It just, it can take a while. And the sixth house is obstacles. So when Mars rules both of them, I mean, this person is supposed in a sense is sort of fortunate. Mars is retrograde as well. So it's usually Mar Mars matures around the age of 28, probably took a bit of time to um, develop some kind of self-defense mechanism. But in any case, strategy, Mars is like a military strategist. He's a soldier. I suppose he doesn't strategize too much. He's not a leader, but he acts, okay? So when you have a Scorpio rising person, sometimes, depending on the health of their Mars, you can get people who have a hard time getting out of their own way. So self-sabotage, self-destructive tendencies, uh, things take a lot, a lot longer than they really should. So this is really evident in this chart. And I've watched like a few clips of him speaking on his podcast and uh, in interviews. And he's had a very, what I would refer to as a very colorful life. So things are really, really picking up. And if you don't believe me, uh, I'm going to do his chart analysis separately in another presentation because it's just so full on. His sidereal chart is even more <laughs> smashing for success. It's absolutely banging. So he, we still have a Scorpio ascendant and now we have a full blown, you know, party in the 10th house. So extremely important. See first ruler still sitting in the 10th. Very, very cool. All right. 10th Lord in the first will also work chart of actor Alexander Skarsgård. Very nice. Really, really nice. Excellent success chart. Tenth ruler is Mercury because Mercury rules Gemini. Gemini sits in the first house. Not only does Gemini, uh, Mercury, pardon me, sit in its own sign of Virgo, Mercury is exalted and in its strongest house. Mercury also rules actors. Fun fact. And the third house is the skill to act and to perform. And we have the North Node here. So this person would have made it one way or, or another, no matter what. Uh, I understand his father is a very, very, you know, very iconic, legendary. He's very skilled actor. Most of his siblings, I believe, are actors as well, but it doesn't really matter. It makes no lick of a difference. He would have succeeded in this realm one way or another. So uh, very interesting. And Mercury is also his uh, soul planet. And Mercury does rule, you know, quick-witted, fast-thinking people with excellent reflexes. I'm going to speak more about that when I start the creativity series tomorrow. I open with Greta Van Fleet and Mercury in their charts is just off the scales and Mercury does rule, you know, dexterity. And so very cool. So this is an excellent chart. Okay. 10th Lord in the first exalted in Virgo rising. And we also have sun in the first sun having so much to do with career sun in the first, um, you know, can hurt other houses by aspect. Let's say like the seventh house, the first house itself, but generally it gives the person an aura of like radiance. It can make them dynamic, highly charismatic. You know, if Venus is there too, someone who's a bit schmoozy, like a politician, so they can be extremely charming. And here Venus isn't combust. So a very charming person, very charming man, someone pretty to look at, someone interesting. You want to listen to them. So son in the first house, very, very good for success also. And seventh Lord in the 10th, because I mentioned earlier, seventh is the 10th from the 10th. And if we take the ruler of the seventh and put it in the 10th house, Jupiter rules Pisces, goes into the 10th house. That's also quite nice. This can happen with any planet, okay, in any sign, as long as the seventh ruler sits in the 10th, depending on, you know, its aspect, what it is, who it's with, etc. It can be quite nice because it's two career indicating houses now having a bit of a party, in the house of status and Jupiter is going to grow wherever he sits. So he's expanding this person's public image. Okay. Status report reputation. It's growing. And the 10th house is the highest point of one's chart. So if that ruler is really healthy and in this case, it's in the best possible house that Mercury can be in, in the best possible sign that Mercury can be in, he is going to have an astronomical rise in one's lifetime, like a rocket. Okay. So if your 10th ruler is exalted in your chart, if it's in its own sign, if it's doing well, life can lift you, okay, it can uplift you, you'll be able to lift yourself up. So it's a very nice thing to see. We can talk more about it in um, future. But 
this is also very interesting. So I mentioned, you know, 10th house, we have Jupiter in the 10th again. This is Colombian singer Maluma. God's gift to eyes and ears, people all over the world. He's amazing. Uh, excellent in a strong sign. And here we have very cool combo. So we've got 10th ruler in the first, right? We just saw that with Alexander Skarsgård. So we have Mars ruling Scorpio sitting in the first house. There he is. Beautiful. We also have Sun in the first and we have first ruler in the first Saturn. So an overloaded first house can give a person immense popularity, uh, name and fame as it were. Okay, so the first house here is really throwing a party. Full-blown Steli. Excellent. Second and 11th Lords, because he is an Aquarius ascendant, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, Jupiter rules Pisces, and Jupiter is sitting in the 10th house. And this isn't so much to do with fame, but money most certainly, because the second house is the money that you earn. Can you sustain yourself in life? Can you make a living? Your bank account and the 11th is a wealth-giving house. So by virtue of the fact that he's an Aquarius ascendant, these are the two signs occupying these houses. And the ruler is Jupiter, and Jupiter sits in the 10th. So that's very nice. He can trade on his status. He can monetize on himself. I mentioned first lord in the first, Jupiter in good condition, 10th lord in the first. Very, very nice. And if that wasn't enough, we have moon in the 7th. So the moon is really swift and um, social has a lot to do with people in a public house, the seventh house is other people. It does, you know, in a good sign of uh, for creativity and popularity, Leo, quite gregarious, quite outgoing. So this chart ticks pretty much every single box. It's pretty crazy. There's always something we have to consider because life just isn't smooth for everybody. But on the whole, just for success, brilliant, just beautiful. So I mentioned, you know, 10th, 7th, 6th, excellent. And then there's something you should consider, exchanges of rulers. And we're going to see a lot of this when I start the creativity series. You're going to see it in the charts of the members of Greta Van Fleet. But here I'll give the examples of Catherine Zeta-Jones, Bridget Bardot, and Sophia Loren. Absolutely iconic. All of them legendary. Here's my favorite, the second most beautiful woman in the world, the first being my mummy. So Sophia Loren Absolutely. And I mentioned her in my Saturn moon conjunction video. You should go watch that. If you have Saturn moon conjunction, you know someone who does. It's pretty, pretty fantastic to analyze that. Okay. We have ninth and 10th Lords exchange giving us a Raja yoga. Mercury rules Virgo and Venus rules Libra and they've swapped places. He went into her house. She went into his house. Do we understand? And the ninth is a very auspicious house. It's very, very fortunate. It's very lucky. It rules luck and the tenth is status. So now we've swapped these two. We've got, you know, Mercury in the tenth. Mercury rules actors anyway. Jupiter is there. So this creates a Raja Yoga. You could also do this with the eleventh ruler as well. And you will see this disproportionate combination in the charts of so many creative people. So we're really looking for sun signs that are Virgo, Libra, um, Taurus, Gemini, because of the proximity and, you know, it can happen to others. But anyways, with the proximity of Venus and Mercury, it makes it much more likely to happen. I've also seen this happen with Sun and Mercury. Um, yes, is that right? Yes, Sun in Virgo, um, Mercury in Leo. All right. Really, really cool combo. So thank you for watching. Speaking of success and a high rise and impact, I always think of Saturn in the 10th house. Reminds me of that meme about that goat, you know, craving that mineral and licking some salt off the side of a mountain. So here's a picture of a goat I took in The Hague. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. So go check your chart. See how your ascendant is doing, your ascendant ruler. See if it's sit in the 10th house. Vice versa is the 7th and the 1st is the 10th Lord and the 1st. Let me know what you think and I'll follow up with more ways to see success in astrology. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I love you all. Bye-bye.